Okay, so a participle is a verb that is acting like an adjective. So let's look at some examples of this. If we're looking for an adjective, we have to find the nouns that it modifies. So let's look at our sentence pattern. Tied is the subject, covered is the verb. Sand creations, or just creations, is our direct object. So we have a direct object, that means this verb is transitive. So we've got two nouns, subject and a direct object. Do we have a verb describing one of those two? Yes, we have rising, describing tide. So that's our participle. Let's look at the second sentence. Same thing, sentence pattern, subject, verb should be replaced. No direct object, so that makes it intransitive. So only one noun that a participle can modify. Got it. Fade is a verb. So faded describes curtains. That's our participle. So let's look at specific types of participles. First we have the present participle. The thing you want to remember with this is that it ends in ing. It still acts like an adjective just like all the other participles, but it's got ing ending. So let's find our sentence pattern. Light is a subject, shown is the verb. We've got a bunch of prepositional phrases here. So, we could have participles describing light or any of the objects of the prepositions in the prepositional phrases. But because we're looking for present participles, we know they have ing endings. So, pierce. As a verb ending in ing, piercing, describing the light, piercing light. So that's our present participle. Same thing here, let's do the same pattern. Let's find our subject, fans, port is the verb. Oh, yeah. And another prepositional phrase out here, so both of these don't have direct objects, making them intransitive verbs. So we got subject. Screaming, scream is a verb, ends in ing. So if it's acting like an adjective, describing fans, which it is, makes it a present participle. So those are present participles. Verbs ending in ing acts like an adjective. So we can confuse that with verbs. So is it a participle or is it a verb? The only way to tell is to see is it describing a noun, is it acting like an adjective, or is it just the verb of the sentence. So let's find our sentence better. Galloping horses, horses is the subject, flu is a verb, cross the prairie is a prepositional phrase, so we have another intransitive verb with no direct object. So galloping, gallop, a verb, describes galloping horses. So we have a participle. Let's look at our second sentence. Horses is the subject. Then we have the verb. We're galloping. Horses were galloping. Another across the prairie is a prepositional phrase, so another intransitive verb. But galloping, because it's acting like a verb here, it's not acting like an adjective. That means it's not a participle. So make sure that your participles they have to be acting like an adjective or they're not really a participle. So we had present participles with ing, now we have past participles. Depending on the verb, regular verbs end with ed. Irregular verbs, depending on what it is, can end with n or with t. So like built, build, built is the past participle or any other irregular verbs would be n or t. Regular verbs end in ed. So let's look at this these two sentences. Let's find our sentence pattern. Pieces is the subject of a shattered glass is our prepositional phrase. We have a verb. Looks like it's going to be uh, intransitive again. Flu. So flu, no direct object. Uh, we've got as far as the opposite side of the room. So we've got a couple prepositional phrases in there. 
Now prepositional phrases have objects of the preposition, so if you're paying attention to the endings of words, you've already found the participle uh, shattered is the only one ending in D, E, D. Uh, shatter is also a verb. So is it describing a noun? It's describing glass. Yes, objects of prepositions are nouns or pronouns. So shatter describes glass. It's a past participle. Let's look at the second sentence. Stray dogs. Dogs is the subject. What did they do? Pod. Verb. If you were just looking for the participle without looking at the sentence patterns, you probably would have guessed that pod was the past participle because it ended in ed. But that's not what it's acting as in the sentence, it's the actual verb. Intransitive in this case, because there's no direct object. But for the ruins of the city, if we go take a little bit longer look, look towards the end of the sentence, we see another ed word. Defeat is a verb. This time it's describing the object of the preposition city. City is a noun. So it's acting like an adjective. Defeated is the past participle. So we have to pay attention to that. Here's the same question past participle or verb. So let's look at example sentences. The open window. Window is our subject. Allowed what? Allowed a breeze. So a breeze is a direct object, making allowed a transitive verb. So we have a participle here, opened. Opened is a verb describing window. Next sentence, window is our subject. Again, what did the window, what happened to the window? It was opened, it's our verb. So we have an intransitive verb here, no direct object. But opened, same word, but it's a verb. We have to make sure that we pay attention. Find the sentence pattern first, then look around for participles, verbs that act like adjectives. So participle phrases contain three things. Like any verbal phrase, they contain the verbal, or in our case, the participle. Any modifiers. Modifiers would be adjectives or adverbs. Modifiers, missing some letters there. Modifiers and complements. That says complements. So, participles, modifiers, and complements. Three things that can be in a participle phrase. So, modifiers again are adjectives or adverbs, remembering that phrases can act like adjectives or adverbs, like prepositional phrases. So a prepositional phrase could be an adjective or an adverb describing the participle. Then you have complements. Those are objects like direct objects and indirect objects and stuff like that. Just complements. So let's look at these three sentences. We've got to find our sentence pattern. We have the first. Divers is the subject. Completed is the verb. Completed what? Our dive. So that's our direct object making our verb transitive. So, let's look for a participle. Motivated. Motivate is a verb. Motivated is describing the diver. Past participle there with the ed ending. So, are there any modifiers or complements? Yes, we have a prepositional phrase by the coach's encouragement. Describing motivated. So, motivated by her coach's encouragement is the participle phrase because it contains participle and in this case a modifier no complements the punctuation the commas here kind of help you to identify that but they're not always there so make sure you're paying attention to the modifiers and complements but punctuation helps so let's look at the next sentence practicing her dives repeatedly she had trained for the competition so what's our subject? She had trained is our verb. In this case, for the competition, is a prepositional phrase, so no direct object. Intransitive verb. So practicing. Practice is a verb. ING ending, so it's probably a present participle because practicing describes the verb, the subject, she. 
practicing what? Dives. Dives is a direct object for practicing. Because it's a verb, practicing is still a verb, so it's part verb, part adjective. It's acting like an adjective, but it can still have complements, just like a verb. Practicing is a direct object, and we have a modifier. Repeatedly describes practicing. So, practicing her dives repeatedly is the participle phrase. Last sentence. Giving her their unanimous approval, the judges awarded the diver a perfect score. Let's find our sentence pattern. Judges awarded, the verb, awarded what? Score. They awarded a score. So score is a direct object. To whom did they award the score? To the diver. It's the indirect object. Make sure you don't just skip ahead and say judges awarded the diver. Did it? They awarded a score to the diver. So let's look at the participle. Giving. Looks like a verb. Give. ing ending. Giving. Who's that describing? Giving the anonymous approval. That's the judges. So giving describes judges. Making it a participle because it's a verb acting like an adjective. So are there any complements or modifiers? Giving what? Approval. It's a direct object. So we have a modifier. And then unanimous describes approval. Giving approval to whom? Her. That's an indirect object. So two compliments in that one. So giving her their unanimous approval is the participle phrase in that last sentence. So hopefully this helps you with participles, understanding them. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.